So we know starting an online business can be extremely daunting, especially when you have no money. Trust me, I've been there. Well, my friend, if you wanna know how to start an online business without any money, then stick around because I'm gonna teach you the four easy steps to getting started in this video. Let's do this. And hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and I'm your host, Jen Marilla. This YouTube video is for entrepreneurs who are trying to grow on social media. If that's right up your alley, then what I want you to do is hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you get notified when I drop my videos every single week, and give me a thumbs up if you're excited to learn my four steps to starting an online business without any dinero, without any money. Trust me, I know. I get it. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get to business, shall we? All right, so let's get started with step one, getting clear on your vision. You need to know the specifics of what your business is going to involve before you even get started. And this means getting crystal clear on who your audience is, what you're gonna help them with, what are they struggling with? So when you figure out whose problem you're gonna solve, it's really good to figure out what it is that you're gonna offer them. How much does that cost? Really narrowing down those specifics and getting crystal clear on what the product or service actually looks like, right? This is kind of the step where you start planning out a business plan. And yes, I said a business plan, although I gotta be honest, I'm not a fan of business plans because I think they're irrelevant. I think that after a few months, it all changes. It's really nice to kind of have a little bit of a note, a little bit of a concrete foundation so you have something to always go back to when you feel lost and confused, especially later on down the road, right? So part of step one is getting crystal clear on your vision. Once you begin to define your offer, and then you wanna get crystal clear on your target market. Who are your competitors? What is it that you're offering? What are they charging and what are you charging, right? What is it that your, what's your secret sauce, right? Like what's the product that you're providing that's different from your competitors? And these are things that you need to think of before you launch, before you start, before you get out there, right? Okay, so this leads me to my next step, step two, which is doing your research. This also ties into step one, but you don't wanna miss this, you guys, because this is the most important part of this whole thing, right? Is really doing your market research. Okay, so this is where you're gonna get your hands dirty. This is the process I enjoy the absolute most, and I'm constantly telling my clients it is the most important. So you wanna offer maybe free calls, getting on video calls with your ideal clients. This is where you wanna ask them what is it they're really struggling with? And not just like a, like a solid problem, you wanna dig deep. What's their emotional, um, philosophy behind their struggles, right? Like you want to hit that emotional pain point to understand what is it that they are struggling with and how you can best serve them from an emotional standpoint. And that is the key, you guys. So doing this research, figuring out what are their hobbies, the more specific you can get, the easier and the better it will be to be able to sell to them, to be able to help them, to be able to create a product that makes you unique than your competitors. The other part of this research is also researching your competitors, really figuring out what is it that they're doing, what is it they're selling, how they're selling it. Now, we do not copy, so don't copy, but really take a look at where they're standing, right? What's their standard? How are they selling people? What's their secret sauce? How how does it differ from yours? If their secret sauce is missing something, how can you add value in yours, right? All these things to consider during the research stage. A big tip that I always provide people is going on social media and polling your audience through stories or offering 15 minute video calls or free discovery calls. Just getting on the phone or asking somebody for a cup of coffee so you can sit down and pick their brain, right? This part is extremely important because it allows you to get crystal clear on who your ideal client is and how you can best serve them. And the more specific you can get, the better it is. Trust me. Okay, so this brings me to number three, setting clearly defined goals. How are you supposed to get anywhere if you don't know exactly where you're headed, right? Setting goals is the key to success, not only in business, but in your life and anything that you do. So you wanna make sure you get crystal clear on your goals and you wanna write them down. I am a huge fan of putting a pen to paper and giving myself deadlines, setting these goals and setting these intentions for two reasons. One, it keeps them out of here and two, it manifests into reality. So setting intentional goals really changes the game. And what I mean by that is a lot of the times people set goals and they set very unrealistic goals. So you want to make sure that when you're setting goals, you're doing four things. 
you're setting a tangible goal. Like be extremely realistic about your goal and be honest with yourself, right? This takes some self-awareness with yourself and some honesty to be able to say, hey, I can do this versus this. And that doesn't mean that you're never gonna get to that big dream, crazy goal that you have in your head. It just means that it's going to take a little bit longer and that's okay, you guys, right? You wanna make sure it's attainable, you wanna make sure it's tangible and you wanna set a time. So when I quit my job to start traveling the world, I gave myself seven months to quit my job and in those seven months every month I had a goal and it was move out of my apartment save money pay off debt sell a bunch of stuff put stuff in storage and then I gave myself a deadline to actually quit my job I'll never forget it was January 22nd 2015 and I told myself if I had accomplished all those things by that day that I would put in my two weeks and guess what I did <laughs> so you want to make sure you write it down. You want to make sure you get crystal clear on these attainable goals and be honest with yourselves. Be extremely reasonable with what you're trying to reach. Now, the reason why I say add an expiration date is because when you set a date, you're giving yourself and it, it's also in our brain, the way our brain works, it's mechanics, right? Because our brains are machines. So you're giving yourself a program, a deadline to complete something, but that only happens if you have an attainable or a tangible goal. And when it gives you that expiration date, it really allows you to just focus on getting things done. And our goals become so much easier to actually attain because it's like we're creating a mini blueprint for success. Okay, so the best way to do this, so like I gave you the example before, was how I decided to quit my job, right? I gave myself seven months. So I gave myself a big goal with a big deadline, and then I had seven months in between of many goals that I had to accomplish each month. So you wanna make sure you start with one big goal and then five or six smaller goals to be able to attain that big goal. So another really good example is if you're batching content. I know this is extremely overwhelming for a lot of entrepreneurs. And the way I do this is I have a goal of creating four videos a month and batching content early at the beginning of the month so that my team can edit it. So what I do is on a Monday, I will sit down and I will strategize my ideas. On a Tuesday, I will write a script. And on a Wednesday, I will prepare myself to film, right? And Thursday, I upload it to my team. And I usually do that at the very last week of the month or at the very first week of the month, depending on what I have going on. But it makes it so much easier to be able to batch content and create content. And it doesn't seem extremely overwhelming because a lot of the times what we end up doing is we have these extremely lofty goals and when you think about this, you haven't even done the mini steps to get to that big goal. You just get overwhelmed and nothing gets done. And so my advice to you is you wanna pick five small goals within a very big goal. And you wanna do this, especially when you're starting out your business, for the first three to six months, right? And then you wanna make sure that each month you're evaluating these goals. You need to adjust them as you need to, go for it. But then every quarter, sit down and adjust them again. See where you're at, see what works, see what didn't work. And this is how you get to know yourself and know if you're actually setting practical goals or you're being an extreme overachiever, right? Which is obviously totally fine as well, but in order for this to work, you have to be honest with yourself. And everybody's different, right? So you don't wanna compare yourself. So again, if you set these goals and you find yourself having to go back and readjust, that's totally fine. This is what goal setting is all about and the key to having successful goal setting. Okay, this leads me to step four. And if you've made it to this far, then I'm excited because we're gonna define this step because this is where we take action. Step four is about formulating an action plan. And so at this point, we've defined who your ideal client is. You've done your market research, you have a business plan, and you've set some lofty goals. And it's all about taking action at this point, right? So the first thing you wanna do is put together a brand kit. This is where you put together your brand colors, your brand fonts. You wanna create consistency. Just like when you look at logos like McDonald's or Nike, or even you see the, the yellow and the red or the black and the white, you automatically associate with those brands. That's branding, that's all psychological, and it's what builds a consistent and reputable brand. You need to do the same thing with your own business. So the first thing you wanna do is create a brand kit. You can use canva.com, it is a free platform, and also paid for multiple bigger features, but you can use this to start off, especially if you have no money. Another really awesome platform that I absolutely love is creativemarket.com. Um, you can buy fonts, logos, colors for very, very low cost. 
Again, that's creativemarket.com. I'll make sure to add these links below you guys. The next thing you want to consider is which platform you're going to live on. So at this point, because you did research in step two and you know who your ideal client is, you know what their hobbies are, you know where they're hanging out, you know where they're spending most of your time. I want you to think of where on social media you need to show up the most. Is it Instagram? Is it Facebook? Is it YouTube? Is it TikTok? Where are the platforms? You want to pick one to two platforms where you know your ideal client is hanging out all the time and you want to start showing up there a hundred percent. Okay. Once you've decided which platform you're going to dominate, you then want to start creating a content plan. This is the fun part. <laughs> this is where you get to decide which platform and how you're going to show up, whether that's video, whether that's posting, whether that's infographics, whether that's educational, whether that's emotional or inspirational, whatever it is, you start creating an actual content plan strategy for your ideal client and your business. And I recommend doing 30 days in advance. I am not a fan of six months or three months. I don't do that. I think it extremely overwhelming. And so for me, I tell people just do 30 days in advance of content strategy. And here's a little bonus tip. If you've done your research, like I told you to do in step two, and it was good, you should be able to write down anywhere between 20 to 30 struggles that your ideal client has. If you can't get past 10, then you didn't do your research good enough. So go back and do step two all over again. But you want to get to 20 to 30 because essentially what you could do is you can recycle that content every 30 days. Pick a topic every day you want to talk about and you can do that in the form of a reel, a story, a post, an infographic, a YouTube video, a blog post, whatever it is that your heart desires, you want to start creating that content plan. And last but not least, and the most important you guys, is how you plan to outreach. <laughs> the outreach strategy, how you plan to show up and execute and reach out to your potential clients, right? Now, in a perfect world, you would launch a business and people would be flooded to work with you. But nine out of 10 times, that doesn't really work that way. So you actually have to step on the court and play. You have to find your ideal clients and you have to find them. This is an outreach strategy. So how do you plan to do that? A big tip that I always tell my clients is, announce that you're launching, tell people what you're offering, and then start getting into stories. Understand that it's going to take some time to nurture your audience, to be able to let them know what you're an expert in, right? That's why showing up consistently on social media is extremely important, creating that consistency showing up every day in your stories, even if it's not your face, showing up as much as you possibly can. And if you struggle with that, you want to check out this video here where I talk about how many times you should be posting on Instagram and what you should be posting, right? So you want to make sure that you are showing up consistently and you're reaching out. And that looks like having conversations in the DM, offering free discovery calls, just really getting to know people. And maybe the people that you've researched for your business, you can reach out to them after you've launched and share with them what you've created and how you can best serve them. All right, you guys, that's it. You have my four steps to starting a business if you had no money. And if you like this, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I want you guys to give me a comment below and let me know what kind of businesses you're starting. What are you cooking up? I really want to get to know you guys better and see how I can best serve you guys. Remember, this YouTube channel is for you guys and the more likes and the more subscribers I get, the more I can create more content for you guys and show up for you guys. So I am here for you essentially. I want to thank you guys for being here today and I appreciate you so much, sending you so much love and I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you next week. Bye.